Welcome to the first holiday special, the 12 Sega Games of Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. It's that wonderful time of year where carolers are caroling, chestnuts are roasting, and nerds are avidly waiting to play their games in front of a warm TV glow. Last episode, we looked at some of the hardware specs of the Sega. This time, we're going to look into its extensive library. There is an estimated 900 games for the system, but only around 700 or so made it to the US. These games typically ran for around $50 to $70. Unless, of course, you account for inflation. $1 in 1990 equates to $1.85 in 2016. That means an average game, which costs $60, would be over $110 today. Would you pay $110 for this game, let alone this game? It's time to take a look at some of the standout titles and see how they stack up. Now, I may not be Santa, but today I am the Sega Elf. Look, I even got a Sega pin. So I took a dozen of my favorite games and not so favorite games that I think you guys would find interesting. So pour yourself some hot cocoa, pull up a chair, and enjoy the 12 Sega games of Christmas. Starting out strong, the first game is the 1993 hit, Aladdin. You press start and you get around 2 seconds to memorize all the items do, then BAM! Right in the action. The music is spot on and the pacing feels about right, but the controls are a little floaty. Whenever you beat a level, you get a chance at a mini game, but it's hopeless. You always lose. The game follows the movie the best it can. I mean, you guys remember the swinging cannonball traps and the uh, skeleton bomb guy and Oh my god, these platforms. I mean, why are there Mega Man platforms here anyway? Ugh, ugh, just look at that! How was I supposed to see the wall there? You make it far enough and you get to the Cave of Wonders, but it's a disaster. When giant boulders are chasing you down, you gotta make blind leaps of faith over lava pits. Not to mention the black pits and... Gosh, how did I miss this jump? Though it had its ups and downs, Aladdin definitely holds up today. I expect to find it for around 10 bucks. Next up, the sequel to the classic. Sega! Sonic 2, released in 1992. It sold over 6 million copies in its lifetime and was universally acclaimed. Unless you mess up those loops, like I always do. Gotta go back, gain the speed. But you know what? It's usually worth it. There are tons of tiny secrets to be found. Like the other games, you get two hits before you die, assuming you have rings, and you gotta get those rings. The stages eventually end with either a spinning post or a boss fight, but a couple of jumps and Robotnik is toast. Easy peasy. Now, the game may seem easy at first, but that's until you get to the chemical plant. Stupid block thing, get out of my way! Alright, got a little careful in the- like, Alright, going fast. Going- What the- What is this? Alright, going- How was I supposed to see that? Alright, just gotta climb up these blocks and- Let's the ooze from Power Rangers! And then, alright, got the boss. Gonna hit him in the face! Whoa, what was that? Okay, round two. Going fast, going fast, going- Going real fast. Supersonic speed, Sonic of the feed, speed feed. Oh yeah, going fast, going, 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 and- Gone. Because of the oversaturation of this game on the market, it's pretty cheap today. I wouldn't pay more than $5 for it. And it's a classic, what else do you want? Time for a relatively unknown game. Desert Demolition, starring Roadrunner and the Wild Coyote, released in 1994. This hidden gem was originally panned by critics, but it has a lot to offer. I mean, from the game title, it's just bursting with charm. A relatively small thing, you actually control the character in the options menu. It's not too earth shattering, but it's a nice touch. You can play as Wile E. Coyote and the sounds are perfect. The goal is to get to the end of each stage while trying to catch that pesky roadrunner. The game is loaded with acme boxes that really do more harm than good, but you can't just pass them up. 
stages end in a variety of ways, sometimes a rocket to space. The ending of the game is greeted with a classy collection of the Warner Bros. mainstays and that classic jingle. But you'd be wrong to think that was it. You can play again as the Roadrunner if you'd like, the annoying bird we all love. While playing as the Roadrunner, you can't use the Acme boxes, which is kind of a letdown, but the Wily e. Coyote takes full advantage of them and tries to take you out. And oh, did I mention that the Roadrunner and Sonic were related? If you're a fan of the old cartoons like I was, this game definitely holds up. It's around $5 in any shop you can find it. Let it not be said that the Genesis didn't have its fair share of RPGs. Shining Force is one of the best tactical grid RPGs around and it received very positive reviews in its 1993 release. This game starts off with some random girl reading you a story about a Dark Lord taking over. Pretty typical stuff. The game starts and you're already being yelled at by old people to hurry up and slay evil. A few moments later, you are already out there with your team slaying the baddies. And I've gotta say, the animations for battle are just gorgeous for this console, and each character has their own animations. After a battle, you have your typical shops you can visit, and you have a lot of nice pictures for all your party members. It's really the small things that stand out here. If you own a Sega Genesis and you love RPGs, this is not a game to pass up but it is a little rare and expensive. I picked this one up for 35 bucks, but expect to pay up to 50. This is truly a hidden treasure of a game. Released in 1994, Beyond Oasis was very divisive among critics and fans alike. It begins with a young lad who finds a golden armlet and returns to his home where monsters have taken over. You are the illustrious Prince Ali. No, no, not that Prince Ali. This game has a definite Zelda feel to it, but it also has a hidden leveling RPG mechanic. The Prince has a wide variety of combos that are done by tilting the D-pad in different ways, and what's more, you even have a wide selection of weapons. However, most of them are limited in use, save for your trusty dagger. As you progress, you attain heart containers and other power-ups. You'll need them as the bosses of these dungeons are brutal. When you defeat the temple, you attain a power element through your armlet. To use it, you must shoot the power at any element. I shoot it at this water, and I can summon a water fairy, which can use healing spells, bubbles, and even a water tornado. Beyond Oasis is definitely the hidden gem of the console. If you can find it for under $30, get it. Next up, the Genesis 6-Pack. This sucker was released late in 1995, and okay, technically it's not its own game, but it's cheap and has six games in one cart. First game is gonna be Super Hang On. Its intense graphics and rocking soundtrack make this arcade port a must own. It also comes with Collins, the Tetris competitor. This game is a lot of fun, especially with two players. I mean, just look how quickly a seemingly bad situation can turn into a combo frenzy. The cart also comes with Revenge of the Shinobi, which is really hard. And I mean, are there enough enemies on the screen? Look at this! I'm like so close! Urgh! And when you get filled with rage, take to the streets, baby. If the kick butt soundtrack isn't enough to get you going, well, then the action will. You get to pick from three characters and can play co-op with a friend. I mean, just look at this! Got him. When you're not pile driving your friends, the game is a classic beat em up. Of course, the original Sega King is here as well. Sonic sold 15 million copies by itself, and I mean, what else is there to say? Lastly, the game is packaged with Golden Axe, another beat em up. Again, three characters to choose from, and you and your friend battle through the evil realm. And when you're not riding whatever that is, you can summon some excellent magic. If you tried to find all six games separately, you would probably pay over $50. But this cart right here is $10. Definitely a good buy if you're a casual gamer or collector. Now for one of my favorites, Rocket Knight Adventures. Originally hailed as a masterpiece in 1993, this game has aged beautifully. It stars a sword-wielding, jetpack-powered possum. 
Sonic eat your heart out. This funky guy has a power sword that can shoot beams and can hang from branches with his tail. His jetpack allows him to zoom all over the screen as soon as the power meter is filled. There are plenty of bosses here and the stages tend to vary, which is nice. The jetpack also allows you to bounce off walls. Ah, oh, would you look at that, a present. Kill it with wildfire! If you're a fan of both Mega Man and Sonic, this game is the perfect combination. They're a little rare to find these days, but expect to pay around $20. Test one, two. Sega. Released in 1995, Comic Zone was a late release game in the Genesis lifespan. It kind of sucks. You're supposed to be this comic writer, but after a freak thunderstorm, you're somehow transported. It sounds cool, but it falls flat on its face. One redeeming feature is the comic-like transitions and relatively simple beat-em-up mechanics, but it's nothing special. The ability to choose your own path may seem cool, but it's all the same in the end. You eventually get to rescue your rat, who is useless. I, I have no idea what to use him for. The game is pretty straightforward, but there are more than enough unfair parts. Like, how was I going to see that fire below me? The biggest problem is the difficulty. You die once, and that's it. No extra lives, no continues, you go back and restart the whole game from the beginning. While critics may have originally praised it for its originality, it doesn't hold up. I'm telling you, $15 is way too much for this piece of junk. Stay away. All right, let's get something good. Oh, Pitfall, The Mine Adventures. Originally released in 1994, this one is a mixed bag. Overall, the animation is actually stunning for the Genesis, and as the title suggests, it has pitfalls. But you gotta be freaking perfect with these jumps, man, or else they're gonna get you. Like, what? You sling rocks to the wildlife, which makes them burst into smoke somehow. Yeah, take that, you monkey! Overall, the gameplay is not that great, but the mechanics are solid, and jeez, would you just take a look at those animations? So the game lures you into thinking it looks great, and then has you yanking on uvulae. I don't know what they are. But as soon as you think you're getting the hang of it, bam! The game explodes on your parade and fools you into failure. All right, just gotta get back up here and... Uh, great, froze. If you're looking for a good platformer, I wouldn't recommend this game, but the animations are pretty neat. If you can find it for five or six bucks, pick it up, but it's kind of a failed idea. All right, a good game, please. Yes, the 1994 classic Lion King another movie made game that was actually decent. You all know the story, a baboon picks up a lion on a rock and the next thing you know, bam, you're the king. So it starts you off as a weak cub, who can't even attack and whose roar is pathetic. What? I mean, did you see that? How can anyone see that? It blends right in. Well, invisible lizards and exploding poop bugs aside, this game is, ah, oh, how did that hit me? Eventually you make it to the hippo bouncing monkey flipping puzzle. To be honest, this is annoying as can be, but the music makes you nod your head and play on until you get to that darned ostrich. Now I remember. You need ninja-like reflexes to hit these jumps, and some are just downright impossible. I mean, look at that. And if you die, you gotta redo that stupid puzzle. Eventually, you make it to this stage where you learn to climb, but it doesn't matter. Look at that. How are we supposed to live through that? It's not like this stage can go at a leisurely pace either. You stay in one spot for two seconds and boulders rain on top of you. How do you have time to dodge the shenanigans? I mean, you gotta go fast. You don't have time to stop and breathe because these boulders won't stop and breathe, they're after you. But if you do somehow manage to make it through, don't worry, there is more climbing on the next level. I'm beginning to hate this game. I mean, look at this jump of wizardry you have to do here. And if you thought that was bad, oh boy. The logs. The waterfall logs. I died here so many times it's not even funny. No matter how many times you jump, you just keep going down. And Simba can't swim. What? A zillion levels later, you finally turn into adult Simba with an attack. But how are all these things here? Baboon, you're here too? 
The animations may still look nice today, but for 10 bucks, I wouldn't touch this game. I mean, it's just too hard. Number 11 is, yes, Super Hydlide. It originally received mediocre reviews on its release in 1989, but this game is way ahead of its time. The game is super in-depth, and it is an RPG that's kind of similar to Fallout. You start off by picking your class and reviewing your stats, which there are a lot of. Don't let the lack of visuals dissuade you, because this game has a lot going on underneath. First off, you have a day and night cycle, which the time is constantly progressing. But when you get outside, the real game begins. Monsters are everywhere, and depending on how much weight you have, that's how slow you move. Oh, did I mention? This game is hard. It's like Dark Souls. Get wrecked until you know what you're doing. You eventually get stronger and start getting more levels. Ah, gotta get inside. Just gotta be safe. Just gotta go. What? That's right. I died in this city because of my hunger meter was empty and I starved to death. As the day goes on, you have to take care of all your character's needs or else. But soon enough, you turn into a monster destroying hero. And that is when this game gets real good. Overall, this game is something of a wonder. Released in 89, its huge ambitions were a little too much for audiences back then, but it has aged like fine wine, just getting better and better each year. If you can find it for 15 bucks, definitely pick it up. And lastly, we have. God, I should have known. Bubsy. Released in 1993, Bubsy was hailed as one of the worst games of all time. Let's see how well it holds up. Accolade. Publishers of Evil. Claws Encounters of the Fur Kind. Huh. What could possibly go wrong? You hear that? Get used to it, because it's the catchphrase of this wretched, foul game. At first, it seems innocent and fun, but the controls are just awful. I mean, it's hard to explain. It's floaty, unresponsive, and half the time you're just randomly bouncing up trees and trying to glide. I mean, God, what a joke. The glide doesn't even give you any distance. It's completely useless. You kill enemies by jumping on them and turning into like a whirlwind or something. But the worst are the enemies. You can never tell what's trying to kill you and what's just part of the background. I mean, look at this. Gumball machine? Of course, the mortal enemy of the bugs. It just killed me. So you start off, and you think, okay, this game is going to be pretty cool, but then, ugh, like, how was I supposed to see that? And then you try to go fast, and then this happens. It's just pure BS. I mean, this tube works fine and is safe, but then this other tube is a death trap? What could possibly go wrong? 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 Okay, so the turmoil begins. I'm gonna beat this abomination. Bubsy, you're going down. Made to the theme park ride. Ride the spaceship through the grammar. Top the slide. Just gonna just gonna glide and What? It reset. I mean, look at this. I was just gliding around and then it just... It just... <laughs> I hate this game. Like, I really hate this game. I played some stinkers before, but oh man. This one takes the cake. Like, we need to burn this thing. Like, destroy it with a rocket or something. A rocket? I know what we'll do. Balls, have you ever built a rocket before? What could possibly go wrong?
very nearly ended in disaster. But it seems that Balls, our engineer, has a cat named Bubs. Apparently, he placed a flaw in the Death Star. Well, at least the cart is destroyed. I mean, just look at it. There's a huge crack here. It's covered in dust and soot and... The motherboard's completely fried. I mean, there's no way it can work. Right? Thanks for coming in guys, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Now the cartridge actually did work. We put it on this Genesis and it worked on that television. Um, I don't know how, I think we deserve a redemption, but it's up to you guys. Um, as for the uh, rocket launch, everything was safe and all planned. We had professionals standing by. If you guys want to know more about that, let me know and I might make a special video about it. So if you want to, comment below, like and subscribe. Until then. Merry Christmas, everyone, and I'll see you next time.